In this video, we will be simplifying radicals, including quotients and products. Recall that when we simplify a radical, we rewrite it with no more perfect square factors inside of it. So in this case, since 18 is the product of 9 times 2, and 9 is a perfect square, we can rewrite the square root of 18 as the square root of 9 times the square root of 2, and we write this as 3 root 2. In this video, I'll focus on the quotient rule, which is division, and the product rule, which is multiplication. The quotient rule tells us that the square root of a over b is the same thing as the square root of a over the square root of b. This is true as long as b is not 0, because we can't divide by 0 or we'd get something that's undefined, and both a and b must be positive. The product rule we've already been using in this direction to split up our radicand, but now we know that if we have two separate radicands that are being multiplied, we could multiply those together to get a different radicand. In this video, I'll show you a few quick examples and things to look out for, then I will do some examples from your note sheet, and then you'll be asked to do some on your own. Many problems have multiple ways to reach the same answer, so you always want to ask yourself which is more efficient, separate radicals or one radical. Let's look at two particular examples of quotients. The first one is the square root of 49 36. Since I know that 49 and 36 are both perfect squares, it makes more sense to write this as two separate radicands, the square root of 49 over the square root of 36. This is just 7 6. Now in this next case, I have the square root of 32 over the square root of 8. Neither of these are perfect squares, so I want to think to myself, would it be more efficient to put these together as one radicand? And in this case it would, because 32 over 8 is 4, and I know the square root of 4 is 2. So I always want to ask myself, is it more efficient to keep them separate? Which it usually is, if at least one of them is a perfect square. And if not, would it help me to simplify them? If I hadn't noticed that this would make it easier to simplify by rewriting them as one radicand, that's okay. I could simplify the square root of 32 to 4 root 2, and I could simplify the square root of 8 to 2 root 2. Now, from here, I can still do some simplifying. The square root of 2 over the square root of 2 are going to cancel out to 1 and 1, and 4 over 2 is going to cancel out to 2 over 1, so I still get my answer of 2. Notice that I can simplify whatever is in a radicand with whatever else is in a radicand, and I can simplify the coefficients with each other, but I couldn't have simplified whatever was in one radicand with a coefficient out front. Let's look at this a little further. In the first case, I have 4 root 3 over 8. Since my 4 and my 8 are both not in a radical, I can simplify this to 1 over 2. So my simplified form is the square root of 3 over 2. In the next case, it looks like I might be able to simplify my 3 and my 9, but since 3 is in a radical and 9 is not, this is actually already fully simplified. In the final case, I have 3 root 10 over 5. Now, I have to put together the two radicals here to make this 3 times the square root of 10 over 5, giving me 2. I always need to double check that my numbers on the outside are simplified, my coefficients, and that my numbers in my radicands are simplified. Now let's look at some examples on the note sheet. The first example is the square root of 25 times the square root of 4. This is a case that it does not matter if you choose to keep them separate or together. If I keep them separate, I know that the square root of 25 is 5 and the square root of 4 is 2, so their product is 10. If I had chosen to multiply them together, I would have gotten the square root of 100, which is also 10. Sometimes it doesn't matter which method you choose, you'll still get the same answer out. In looking at number 14, since neither of these are perfect squares, I'm going to choose to multiply them together. This makes my radicand 600. If I choose to do the factor tree method, I can actually start with 40 and 15, because I already know that those are factors of whatever my original number is in this case 600. I see that I'll have a 2 squared and a 5 squared in my radicand, so I'll be able to write a 2 and a 5 on the outside, and I'm left 
with a factor of 2 and 3 inside the radicand. So I'll have a 2 and a 3. This gives, this gives me 10 times the square root of 6, which is exactly what we would have gotten if we'd simply broken this up to the square root of 100 and the square root of 6 if you in your head noticed that 100 is the largest perfect square factor of 600, and we'd still get 10 root 6. 15 is another case where we have two options. Since I know that 100 divided by 25 is 4, I'm simply going to simplify the, sim the fraction to 4. So I have the square root of 4, which is just 2. If I had chosen to separate this into the square root of 100 over the square root of 25, I would have gotten 10 over 5, which is also 2. Now let's look at number 16. That fraction doesn't look like it will simplify e evenly, but I do know that I see a perfect square there. I see that the perfect square, 49, is in my denominator of my radicand. So I'm going to split up my radicand into two separate radicals. Since the square root of 49 is 7, I've already simplified my denominator. With the numerator, you can choose to make a factor tree if you want. I know that 162 is 81 times 2, so I'm going to simply do it like this, and I get 9 root 2 over 7. I double check that 9 and 7 cannot simplify further, and therefore this is my final answer. This is the last problem we'll do together, number 17. I look and I see that 50 and 5 look like they could simplify, but since only 50 is in the radical, the only number that could simplify with this 5 would be the 4. Those do not have any common factors, so I'm just going to do the problem out. I have 4 times the square root of 50, and I know that the largest perfect square factor of 50 is 25, so I'm going to break it up. Again, you could choose to use a factor tray if you did not already know that fact. This gives me 4 times 5 times the square root of 2, all over 5. My 5s will simplify, so my final answer here is 4 times the square root of 2. So to summarize, we have these two new rules that we can use to help us simplify more complex situations with radicals. You always want to ask yourself, which is more efficient? Should I separate my radical into two, or should I put it together as one radical? It may start as two, and you may put it as one. It may start as one, and you may put it as two. You also always want to double check that you fully simplified the coefficients and that you fully simplified any radicands that are left in the radical symbols. Thanks for watching.